Sandy Shorten in TBCS. And uh, we will mostly focus on one special software called Git, which is a TCS software. So first, um, just to have an idea, who, who, how many of you are already familiarized with TCS or Git or anything? <laughs> okay. So the tutorial will be mainly for you because we, <laughs> we will mostly cover the basics here. And so if you already know about Git, you might not learn a lot of things, but uh, I hope it will still be informative for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Yeah. Okay. So how do I do that? That should work, right? Okay. So why would we uh, use uh, version control systems? Because you, you might already, uh, you know, do that, like renaming your files and folders with uh, different name versions so that you can find them easily. But that's, that is not ideal because um, the problem with that is that you might, for example, uh, mislabel a file with the wrong version name or uh, overwrite maybe a file that you wanted to keep. And these changes will be very hard to track. So if you make a mistake, it's kind of hard to, uh, to keep track of it and, and recover the older versions. So we will look into something else that allows you to manage your versions in a, in a more manageable way. And uh, it will help you to keep track of your file modifications, but also it will allow you to collaborate with all the people on, on, a, on the project. So um, you, can, you can then also try some alternatives uh, if you want to test some stuff before putting it all on the same workflow. And so, yeah. We'll see how we can do that. And finally, you will also see that we can release some versions when you are satisfied with with the, with the status of your work at some point. Okay, so before uh, we get started, I guess that all of you can use a command line if you already know how to use Git. Do you? Okay, perfect. And, and how about the people on Zoom? They're just going to ask me to keep it longer. Oh. Or not turn it too much. Yeah. Okay. I can try that. I can maybe put the screen here so that I will face both the screen and the microphone. Hello. Do, do you guys know how to use a command line? <laughs> okay. So let's keep to this session. Um, has everybody installed Git on their machines? Okay. Yes. Okay. So to uh, not loud enough. I think so. Wait, where is your out? Out. Oh, uh, it should be. Should be. Should be here. Yes. I think you already must have a comment. Oh, yeah. oh excellent. Should be excellent. Yeah, good. I also can add that's good. Does that change the configuration on the Zoom stuff or not? I don't think I need to. Okay. So if it is already installed, we can. So first, we're going to see how we can use Git locally, so on your own machines, not yet remotely, just for your own use. Okay, so what we can do, actually, I would like to, to do it uh, at the same time that I am describing it on the slide. So I don't know if it will be easy because I'm also sharing the screen at the same time, and this is kind of uh, tricky, but we can try. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> okay, Let, let's say yes. Okay, so no one sees that, right? Do, do Zoom people see that? I'm not sure. 
So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, create a project folder. So to do that, we first have to create a folder. So let's create a folder. So I can I can create it manually like this, or I can also create it using the terminal. So let's just do that. And now it's created. I can see it in, uh, in, uh, in the list of my folders. Sorry about that. Now I want to go into it. So I'm checking out the directory. And now I want to initialize this as a git folder. So this is the comment that I'm going to use git init. It says basically, Hello, Git. I want you to manage this folder for me. So now we initialize an empty Git repository inside uh, this folder. I just want to make this shorter. Okay. So yeah, this is done. Our folder is now a Git repository. Now, uh, I'm not going to do that because it should already be configured uh, that way. But uh, you need to introduce yourself to Git so that Git knows what your name is and what email address can be used to identify you. So you can configure it that way. I'm not going to do it now, but for people who can use some time for people to do it. Okay, now we can try to ask Git about the status of our repository. So maybe try that. And, uh, and maybe tell me before I do it, what, what you can see. There's a spoiler alert on, on the yeah. slide, but <laughs> what is Yes, On there the is no commit yet. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and also, there is no. Uh, actually, it shouldn't say that because for now we don't we don't have any file, either tracked or untracked, and yet, unless you used a repository that you already had, like a folder that you already had, and initial initialize the folder that was not empty. Maybe okay. that can happen. So nothing to commit. We just copy the files and just okay. Okay. So let's. First, let's add some files in uh, in our folder just to see what will happen. So to create a file, I can do git touch. Oh, sorry, I can just touch. Um, I'm going to create a basic text file so with the txt extension and see what happens. So now, oh, touch is to create a, a new file. Uh, was that you? Yeah. Okay. Because we skipped the first slide on the command line, how to use the command line. Because you guys told me you knew how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's an empty file, no? It's rarely useful. Yeah, for so. now it's, it's completely empty. You're right. <laughs> we are going to edit it later. <laughs> Actually, we could edit it if we want. But for now, um, if we have this, now we have a file. And so if we ask, Git about the status of our folder, it will say that we have a file txt that is untracked. So that means that Git recognize that, recognizes that there is a file, but if we do any modifications to this file, Git will not know about it. It's a file, it's an untracked file. So we want to track it. So Git actually tells us how to do that by uh, using the command git add. So we're going to do this, git add, uh, 
Define.txt. Okay, so now we don't have uh, any message, but if we do get status again, there it is. Our file is tracked. It's written in green. So now it's in what is called the staging area. Our file is here. But the history will not be recorded yet. In order for the history to be recorded, we need to commit it. So we will do that uh, in the next slide. So basically, when you do a commit, everything that is in the staging area will be uh, captured and added to the repository and to the history, the timeline of your comments. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So now you've done add. And what if you change this file after this, but before the commit? Will it be tracked? And then if you commit, uh, the changes will be pushed? Uh, yes, it, it will only, so pushed, yeah, you're not there really. yet, but, <laughs> but uh, yes, if you, if you do any modification, as long as the file is into the staging area, these modifications will be committed. Okay. So we, we will try it right now if you want. So I'm going to open my uh, my file. So I like to I like to use um, VS Code, but for now I, I can just use a basic uh, a basic text file. So we're going to open the file. Uh, if you are on yeah, we skip. so we skip the the line on command line, but you can usually you can do that. But if it doesn't work, maybe you're on Windows, and maybe edit will work. Okay, this doesn't work either. So, but the question one doesn't work on Windows. Like, uh, the command search doesn't work on Windows. Oh Just yeah, to, that's yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, I can write. You can create a new file. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do that. It's just easy so that you don't have to jump between the file explorer and the command line all the time. But yeah. it's, it still works. Okay, great. I can't use my VS Code. Nano would work. Yeah, Nano would work too, but I don't like Nano. <laughs> we can do that. Okay. Yeah, I hate Nano. <laughs> no, I think I'll just go to. <laughs> I think I'll just use a basic, basic text file, uh, basic text editor. Okay, so we're going to add a few lines. Yes, do it. Don't forget to save. And then if we go back to our command line, hello. So for, uh, to answer Hugo's question, we can ask git status again to see what's happening now, we, now that we have modified the file. Ah, so it's, so the file is tracked, but the modifications are not yet tracked. They're in red. <clears throat> yes. So they will not be part of the community? Yes, the change is not staged yet. Okay. So for now, like the modification is not into the staging area. So we need to add it. And as soon as it is in the staging area, we will be able to commit it. And, uh, and when we commit it, see if it's in green, it will be added to the commit and the modification will be recorded in the history of commits. So now we can try commenting. What does nano and VS code do? Oh, they are just stacked editors, oh, okay. uh, notepads, okay, anything. <laughs> yes. So now we are going to commit this change. So I'm doing git commit. If I don't specify anything, so everything that is in the in the staging area, everything that is here will be committed. 
And I'm going to add a message, a comment message, because I want to keep track of my uh, history of comments. And when I look back at the history, I want to know what this comment refers to. So I will add a little message. So I'm using .m to add a message. And I'm adding a comment message, for example, uh, This is a very, uh, very uninteresting uh, message, but it will work for this. And there we go. So now we can see that we have one file that has been changed. Two insertions, that means that two lines have been inserted because I added two lines. And, uh, and it created a new comment. And the name of this comment is there. So now, if I want to see the history of the comets, I can ask git log. So git log, so for now we only have one comet, but when we have several comets, git log will show the history. I'm just going to go back to the slide because we have, so we, we've done that, git commit m, the message of your comet, and then we have used git log to show, to show the history. So git log is different from uh, git status because on git status, you can have uh, an overview of the staging area, what is currently in the staging area, what is not in the staging area and so on. And with git log, you can show the history of the comments. Things that, is, that are on the staging area but not committed will not appear in git log. Is that clear? Okay. Now what we want to see is uh, maybe the difference between uh, the first version and the, and the second version of, of our file. So to do that, we can use the comment git diff. So you have several options uh, uh, that you can add to the comment git diff to use it in different ways. And actually, when you are not sure of what options you can add to a comment, you can use uh, git help. So for example, here, I want to use git diff, but I don't really know how, how to use it. So I think this should work. See this page here, stands for help, and it shows you how you can use git diff so for example, you can add uh, some options if that uh, the first comment and the second comment that you want to be there. And you can also use this diff for one particular file instead of showing all the modifications between all the files. For now, we only have one file, but this can be useful if you have a lot of files and you're only interested in, in the differences between uh, the first version and the second version of one file in particular. So you can try that. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to try it without any options just to see what happens. Nothing. So now I'm going to add my file txt. And I think I need to specify the commits. So uh, since I only have one commit, it will not be very useful. So I'm going to add a second commit to compare two commits together. So let's go back to my text editor. There it is. Let's add another line. Okay. I'm going to come with this new change. So first I need to add it. Then I need to comment it. I'm going to change the message with something like added a line to see the difference. 
that. Okay. And now if I get logged again, I will see two comments. Oh. Yes. So yes, I have two comments on top of the other. So this is, I already have like a history of comments. And you can see also that uh, for every comment, I have the author and the date. So the author for now, it's not very uh, important because it's just me writing. But when we will see how to collaborate with other people, it will be very useful to know so that you can ask the right person if you don't understand something. Um, so you can see that those two comments have names, which are very long and, and, and uh, kind of hard to remember. But if you need to use them, as I will right now, you can just copy paste them. For example, here, if I want to see the difference uh, for the file TXT between this comment and that comment, I can do a git diff. Oops. Between commit one, so that one. I'm just going to copy paste them because it's too long. For file txt. And now I can see that on minus is here. So it means that online has been uh, removed. And uh, oh, yes, because I, I did it the other way around. So this is the most recent comment, and this is the most uh, the oldest comment. So I did a comparison. Oh, sorry. Yes. So this was the most recent comet, and this is the oldest comet. So if I'm comparing this one with that one, I will see that the line has been removed. But if I do it the other way around, if I say uh, I want to see the difference between the old one and the new one, then I will see that the line has been added. So let's try that. First. I see. So now it's in the right order. I put the old first and the new next. And I can see that there is one line added in green between uh, the first file and the next file. Okay. Is that clear for everybody? Cool. So what next? So yeah, you get something like in red, you have the lines that are removed. As we saw earlier, and in green, the lines that are added. So, just a quick recap of what we just did. Uh, we learned to create a Git repository <coughs> with Git in it. Then, we learned how to view the status of the staging area with Git status. Then, we can uh, add a file to the staging area with Git add and commit for the whole stage area using Git commit with a message. To annotate your comment. And, uh, and finally, with Git log, you can see the whole history of your comments. Okay, so this is fun, but uh, sometimes you might want to like jump to a comment because you want to use a previous version of your work for some reason. So you can do that using git checkout, the name of your comment. So let's try this. For example, let's say I want to go to the oldest version. So the oldest version is that one uh, because it's uh, it's the one that is uh, down the stack. So let's do that. Okay. So now, if I look at the state of my file, file txt. on this, so I need to reload it. And now that I reloaded it, 
I cannot see the last time because I'm, I'm looking at the first version of my file, which only had two lines. But don't be afraid. The second version is not lost. It is still in the comic history. But right now, I can still work on this version if I want to. Although, don't, because <laughs> If you want to, if you want to um, work on a version of your previous comet, don't do it on your main branch. And we are going to how we can create new branches so that we don't mess the whole history up. You know what happens? We don't need. Ah, uh, yeah, you will end up with conflicts and stuff. With uh -huh. <laughs> conflicts. <laughs> I mean, you, it, Git will tell you anyway. They'll be like, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? You are working on the brain branch and you are modifying your previous version. So you can do it, uh, but it will make things a bit complicated for you. So the best practice is uh, creating a new branch. We will see how to do it. Okay, for now, I will just go back to. Um, Yeah, I forgot. Let's see. Okay. So, something that uh, we all not noticed is that those names are very, very long and very hard to remember. So, if you have a special comet that you want to refer to very often, because, for example, it might be uh, a special a version of your software that you want to use uh, more often, then uh, you can tag it. So it's like baptizing your comet, giving it a name so that you can use it later and not use these very complicated uh, comet names. So it's not something that you do very often. Most of the time, you don't need to refer to comets, uh, but I mean, it might be useful, like if, if it's a, a version, for example, let's say uh, I have the version one and I want to mark it at the version one and then it will always be that way. Then I can add a tag. So for that, we're going to use the common git tag. Okay. So I should still have uh, my complicated comment. I'm going to call it. Okay. So now I should get a tag for my comment. See this comment right there is now tagged as v1.0. So this, I can now refer to this comet instead of copy pasting this long name, I can use that tag. So I'm, I don't need to check it out right now as we are doing this, uh, as we are doing here, because I already checked out this comet because I'm, I'm right there, I'm at this position. So in the message, sorry. sorry. Yes. What happened to the message, this first version text? Oh. No, uh, I mean, in, you mean that you, one? You gave it a name, yeah. I yes. Gave it a, I gave it, uh, yeah, I gave it a tag message. So it doesn't show here. I think it should show somewhere else, but I don't really know where. Um, that's a good question. I don't really know where it shows. Maybe if I do like git tag, no, it just say, okay. Well, that's a good question. I never thought about it. <laughs> okay. Really? Yes. When you're adding the tag, you don't have to specify the file name or the special UID code. The tag will uh, name your commit. And okay. your comet, a comet isn't just a file. In our case, it was just a file, but it's a particular case. 
the commit will will be kind of a box containing all the files in a particular state oh, okay. where you recorded it when you did git commit all the files in the staging area were snapshot in a way in, in this commit and so a commit doesn't necessarily refer to one particular file it can be any any file that were uh, in, into this commit at, the, at that moment but that doesn't need that information it will just take the entire mm -hmm. thing and call it version 1.0 Yes. Tag tag refers to the commit, okay. not the file itself. So if you want to tag a version, you just have to check it up. Uh, yes, or you can add, uh, I guess you could add the name of the commit that you want to tag to the tag comment if you're not uh, if you're not on the on the commit at this at this particular moment. We can we can ask git tag help to know the, the options that we can add to git tag. Dash n and a number, it will get the Okay. Oh, okay. We can try that. Git n, you said? Git tag. Git tag. Dash n. Dash n. And then put like 10. Together with n. Oh, like this? It's like a number of characters of 10. Ah. Oh, okay. Okay, because it has a limited number of characters when, when saying the tag name. If you can add a mm -hmm. okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> that is fun. <laughs> but just n works. Actually. Yeah. So n and the number of characters that you. Just n. I thought it was like I mean n followed by nothing. I guess uh, dash n would mm -hmm. be maybe no no character limit, mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. And and ten might be a ten mm -hmm. character limit. <laughs> I guess so. Anyway. Okay, so this is good, but now what if you want to, you know, you want to try some new stuff, but you're not completely sure of what you are doing, so you don't want it to be in the main history yet, because you're like, okay, maybe maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just random stuff, and maybe I don't want it to show in my main history. So for that, we are going to create branches. So. Uh, Every time you do a branch, sorry, you, your history will be like kind of divergent like this. So you can work on separate stuff on this branch uh, without affecting the main branch or any other branch that uh, you or other people are working on. So that you can separate the features and the, and the, and the tests a little bit. So, how to create a branch? Well, first, maybe we want to see what branches are available. So, in order to do that, we will ask git branch. Okay, so we have only one branch and it's master. Now, what if we want to create some new branch? So you have several ways of doing that. You can, for example, say git branch test. But if you do that, it creates your branch test, but you are still on the branch master. So you have to check out the branch test. As we check out a commit, we can check out a whole branch. Okay, switch to branch test. Now, if I do git branch, I can see the two branches master and test, and I am on the branch test with the small star and green coloring. There is a way to do that a bit more quickly because it's something that we do very, very often in one line. You would do this. So git dash b for branch, check out and the name of your branch. I cannot call it test again because we already have a branch test. Ah, no, you cannot do that. Oh, wait, no, it put, says something else. You can put oh, it after option. check out. Hmm? I think you have to put check out first and dash B second. You're right. Probably right. 
so we go because there is no space. And yeah, a branch name test already exists, so I need to give it another name, for example, test2. And now I should be on test2 already. So in, in just one line, I can, I can create a new branch into here. Okay, so uh, let's go back to, uh, actually, let's stay here and uh, let's merge this branch into master. So what does it mean merging? So uh, when you merge a branch, you just add all the commits of this branch to the master branch. So that's, you do that when you are pretty sure of what you did on your branch and you just want to fuse it with the main history. So if I do it now, it won't change anything because I didn't add any commit to test two. Test two is exact, ex exactly the same state as in, as in main, for example, as in master, the main branch. So I could do it without changing anything. I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, it says already up to date because there is no changes between test two and master. But if we do some modifications on, uh, on test two, uh, maybe for example, I could add a new file and see what happens when we have to write files. So now if I do if I do a git status, I should see that some things have changed. Okay, there is a new file called text2, and for now it's untracked. So I'm going to add it in order for it to be tracked. See it's tracked now, and I'm going to commit it. Uh, and we'll add the message. Uh, add a new file, file two. And now, if we get logged again, so this is what happens. We are on test two, and this commit is only on test two. It is not yet on the branch uh, master. On the branch master, we only have these two commits. But these branch test two has uh, the three commits. Like it's as if if I go back to um to this uh, this schema. So these are like the common commits, the first two commits, and this would be the third commit, which is only on test two, and it's not on the main branch. But the branch already has those comments as well. Okay. Okay, so now if I if I merge something, it should say I never do it that way actually. <laughs> I don't I don't merge usually. I rebase. Either, but I, think it's the other way I think I should go into master, check then, out master, and then, then merge, merge the test two. Yep. So. I always uh, always rebase usually. And uh, this is another way of merging, but we are not going to uh, to see how to do it in this session. So now if I merge test two, yes. Mm -hmm. Now we have merged our branches together, the master branch and the test two branches. So we have actually added the commit of tech test two on top of the commits of master. So like if I do a git log, so I, I am on master now because I checked out master. And if I do a git log here, this is what I can see. 
I can see that this commit is on both test two and master. So now I don't really need the branch test two anymore because it's merged with master. So I can remove it. Sometimes you might want to keep it if you want to keep on working on it or whatever. It depends on your uh, use cases. But in that case, I'm going to remove it. So in order to do that, I'm going to say git wait. It's supposed to be git dash d, but git branch dash d, but I'm not sure if that gets in order to um, there we go. And I'm going to remove uh, to delete the branch test two using this comment. Git branch dash d test two. Okay, so it deleted branch test two. And if I do git log again. I no longer have test two here. I just have master. And master has all these three commits. And you can see that test here only has those two still. Test hasn't been changed. So by using branches, you can work on separate features without affecting the other branches. So it's quite important to keep a clean uh, main history and not interfere with other people if you are also working with other people. So just a quick recap on branches. Uh, so we've seen how to list the branches. We've seen how to create a new branch. We've seen how to check out on a branch. And we've seen how to merge branches together and delete a branch that we are not using anymore. Okay, so this is this is fun, but for now it's not very useful because we only used Git for our own use. I mean, it's still interesting because you can still keep track of your versions, and even if you're using it alone, it's still very interesting to to have this history of all your versions without having like a lot of files uh, named. Uh, with you know version one, version two, and so on, and you're unable to uh, see the date it was created in, or uh, or whatever, or the last date it was modified. Uh, because if you if you change your computer and move the file, then it will say created at the date you moved it. So you know, see what I mean? I don't know what you mean, but I'm using <laughs> Dropbox. I don't know whether it works like that or not. Ah, in Dropbox, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you keep a timeline on Dropbox of your versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. In 30 days, you can use uh, whatever versions you have. Every okay. change is registered. You don't have to commit. Okay. Whatever changes you are saving, it is automatically updated. Okay. That's interesting. But something you can uh, do with Git, I don't know if you can do it with uh, Dropbox, is uh, show the differences between two versions, git diff, can you do that too? Okay, interesting. So now just, uh, we'll see how, I, I don't know if we have time, what time is it? Do we have time to see how to use remote branches or not? It's up to you guys. Yes, okay, cool. Okay, so now uh, the thing with branches is that uh, branches can belong to other people. And you can work on other people's work, other people's branches, or you can merge other people's branches with your own branches. So you can do a lot of stuff with uh, with branches. So I only, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I showed you like two examples of online platforms that you can use to um, put your own work onto a remote platform. So. You have other, other platforms available. These are just two examples, Git, GitHub and GitLab. These are the most famous ones, uh, but you also have like Bitbucket or a lot of other available. So um, for now, I'm going to show you maybe, I, I don't know, do you guys already have like a GitHub or GitLab account? Okay. Yes, sure. Is maybe you can try to use a common uh, platform that everybody has. I don't know if it will be possible, but. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. So the address is in the Zoom link as well. Uh, do you want me to show it again? I don't know. Do you want me to press it? So, uh, obviously, um, if you were doing that, if we were all adding the same remote in our uh, separate folders and then pushing <laughs> those remote folders into the same repository all at the same time, it would not work. So what I advise you to do, well, we would have a lot of conflict. So what I advise you to do is to take the same repository as uh, my repository. And in order to do that, we are going to clone it. So instead of using this comment, git remote add origin, blah, 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 we're going to uh, git clone and this URL should be working. So if you do a git clone, yeah, like this, git clone, this. So for now it might not work because I haven't added uh, anything to the to the repository. So maybe it won't work for now because the repository is empty. But we can try adding some stuff to the repository and see if it works. So in order to in order to add some stuff to the repository, I'm going to use the comments git push. So I have all the comments that we are using. So git, git clone is to uh, clone a repository that already exists remotely. And, oh, I didn't add a uh, um, git push. Oh, God. I'm going to add it on the slides in case you want the slides for later. <laughs> exactly. OK. So let's try git push. So, oh no, it says the current branch master has no upstream branch. Okay, it says that because I have uh, several branches on my uh, tutorial repository locally, but I didn't specify which branch I want to use as the main branch for the remote repository. So I need to say, okay, my branch, my local branch master, will be the same as the remote branch master. So on the remote repository, I will have a master branch, which will be linked to uh, the master branch of my local repository. So anytime I will uh, add some changes to the master branch in my repository, if I push those changes, they will be found uh, in the master branch of the remote repository. Does that make sense? So origin is just a name you chose? No, origin is, uh, it says that it's uh, it's it's like the, the remote repository that I want to use. It's, uh, yeah. the origin is not a name, it's a, it's a, it's a keyword. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have one question. Yes. How do you leave the remote access? Uh, how do I leave the remote access? Uh, I don't really understand the question. How... Okay, can can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so yeah, my question is uh, because I connected to, I remotely put your uh, repository, so I wanted to leave it and then maybe connect to uh, mine remotely or something. So how, because oh. I, yeah. How do you disconnect from? I, I in that case, I think uh, so. That's why I said maybe you should uh, git clone instead of uh, git add remote, uh, because if you if if you do a git add remote to the oh. okay. So now, um, if I do that. You say that I can copy paste this token. That will work. Yes. 
Yay. So yeah, so they, they changed it a bit because uh, before that they were using SSH keepers that was uh, that were only attached to a computer. But I guess this is just the, I guess this is the same principle, but they made it transparent so that you don't have to generate the key yourselves, yourself. I don't know. Anyway, it works. So now uh, a new branch should have been pushed and this new branch should, have, should be called Chloe because it's my branch. So we're going to see on the remote repository what is happening. So here we have the remote repository tutorial, and we can see that there is a new branch called Chloe, and this branch has two files, file one and file two, and we can compare it to the main branch. So let's compare it to the master branch. So here I'm comparing it to the master branch. The master branch is the branch that Viola sent, I think. I think. So it is. Uh, it, it was the uh, the main state of the, of the folder. But then I added my branch, which has a new file on it. So we can compare it and see what's the difference. Here there isn't anything to compare uh, because <laughs> Master and Chloe are entirely different from its histories because I didn't clone this repository. So actually, what happened? is that Git cannot uh, make the difference, uh, like Git cannot relate our two repositories because we both added our remote separately. So what I should do instead of adding my remote and then pushing is I should clone and then push because the repository already existed before I added my remote. Can yeah, I could replace, but I, I wasn't going to. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I so could replace as well. Should, that's true. Change nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't know it's empty. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think if I, if I rebase, it should work as well. I, I wasn't really planning on, on talking about rebasing <laughs> in this yeah. session. Oh, you could just do it, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> we're already out of time. So maybe we can just stop here and say this is how you push branches on the remote folder but that's mm -hmm. fine I mean it was just to cover the basics so <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it's not too frustrating for people who already knew how to use git <laughs> but that was uh, that was supposed to be a very basic tutorial mm -hmm. and just just to to finish um we have already seen how to tag our versions, but uh, something interesting we can do uh, with the, the, these tagged version is publish them and, and giving them a, a DOI. So we are not going to do that here, but just to, to, to tell you that it exists. Uh, you can, when you have a new release, you can create a DOI attached to this release and publish it on, for example, Zenodo, but you have uh, some other, other websites that allow this, uh, and, uh, and this allows you, so yeah. So using this, you have like a kind of database of, uh, of software, data sets and stuff like that, uh, that have a DOI, even though they're not necessarily papers. And this DOI refers to um, the, the VCS tag, usually a Git tag. So it's very useful to get uh, a snapshot of these guys. So thank you, everybody. Sorry, it was a bit long. And thank you, Shola and Eduarda, for the Organization. <laughs> if anyone has any questions. Yes, any questions? Maybe on the Zoom. All good for me. Okay. Thank you, Juliette.